of 60 milliamps. So there's internal magnetic shunts that help keep that from going, that help to redirect the flux if there's too much flux going through the actual coil. So I have those wired in parallel, and so I have a 120 milliamp limit to charge the capacitor bank. And it passes through this right here, which is the low pass filter. And that's just an RC filter, which helps prevent any damage to the neon sign transformers from the machine. It goes then through the spark gap, and it charges the capacitor bank through the primary coil. And when that capacitor bank gets to a high enough voltage, it'll break down across the spark gap, it'll ionize the air, and there'll be a little bit of plasma there. That will then allow the capacitor bank to discharge through the primary coil, creating a magnetic field. That will then also set the circuit into resonance, because when that magnetic field collapses, it'll recharge the capacitor bank the opposite polarity, and then that cycle will just keep repeating. And that happens, the frequency is about 250 kilohertz. That then will resonate with this circuit. This is another LC circuit, which has a resonant frequency of the exact same as this circuit. So this right here actually represents the big donut up top called a toroid. This is just ground. So there's capacitance relative to ground. Now, the massive difference in inductance between these two circuits allows for that step up of voltage. From 9,000 volts right here to about 100,000 volts at the beginning of the transmission line, and then finally at 350,000 volts when it comes out the top. Yes? Well, there's, there's an LC formula where you in, input your inductance and capacitance get a resonant frequency. But in this circuit, I actually am able to tap into different points on the primary, primary coil. And that allows me to tune the inductance of that coil. So then I can match this circuit to this circuit's natural frequency. <coughs> How do you match the the coil to a capacitor? I'm not entirely sure that might be a question for John. I'm I'm more involved in the Tesla coil aspect of this. <coughs> yeah, I just trial and error pretty much. You get close with your calculations, but those are never exact because there is different variables in when you actually build the system. So then I just tune that after I had to build it. Yes. Um, about 1100 watt light bulbs. It's about 1100 watts, that's what it is. So, and the output power is just a little bit less than that because there are inefficiencies in the system, but I tried to make it as efficient as possible. There's something called the Freer formula, which allows you to calculate the maximum arc length that you're gonna get for a given input power. With this system, I haven't measured it here in Idaho, but in Indiana I was getting 48 inches when it should be about 56. However, if I have half the power input, my furrow efficiency goes up. So then I have 40 inch arc, and that's exactly what it should be. Anything else?